Street today. Stocks are up in active trading, 33 and a half million shares, with Dow Industrial Average up 4.52 at 943.42. Most actively traded stocks at this hour are NPL, that's up one and an eighth. Texaco up a half point. AT&T is up three quarters. IBM is off seven eighths. Texas International is down a half point, with Central Southwest Corporation remaining unchanged at 26 and three eighths. On the London market today, gold over the Believe this, I'm standing here trying to decide which suit to wear. I'll see about coffee. You look nice. Yeah. They're gonna take one look at me and figure they made a terrible mistake. Did you take care of the municipals? In her name, so she can use the money if she wants? It's all taken care of. What about the Mercedes? Do you want me to try and sell it? What for? Am I going to need the money? Well, let's wait and see. Roy Manson? Right on time. Yes, sir. Could you sign here, please? I'm his attorney. It's regulations. Well, he's not going anywhere. I'll be up to see you in a couple days. Thanks. I'm sorry.
Report to administration. What are you doing here, Claire? How are you, Jane? I ask you a question. Look, um, Terry asked me to bring her up here. She's been bugging me. She wants to see you. You didn't bring her. Look, she wants to see you. What could I tell her? Jane, would you wait a minute? Look, I'm only her foster mother. I don't know what I'm supposed to say to her. She's always asking me questions about you. She's only nine years old. What am I supposed Look, to tell you her? tell her whatever you want, okay? But I don't want to see her, and I don't want her to see me. Now, don't come up here again, Claire. Jane, I mean it. You are now entering the Greenleaf State Co-Correctional Institution. Participation in this rehabilitation program of men and women together is a privilege. Failure to follow the rules of this facility will lead to disciplinary action. One, you may fraternize with members of your own or the opposite sex. But overt or clandestine sexual acts are illegal. A sexual act is defined as anything beyond hand-holding or a closed-mouth kiss. Infractions will lead to disciplinary action. Two, you will be attentive and respectful to all state employees and officials. Address such persons by Mr., Mrs., or Miss, followed by his or her last name, or their proper title. Example, Superintendent Crown, Lieutenant Hodges. Disrespect towards state officials will lead to disciplinary action. Can I keep these? Thanks. Thank you. Harold Virgil, Roy Matson. I'm Superintendent Crown. This is Assistant Superintendent Elliott. Dr. Elliott runs our resident counseling service. It's not compulsory the way it is at Brian and Virgil, but I'm here if you need me. I suppose you've noticed by now there are women here. You'll do your time with them. Meal time, work time, rec time. But I want to make one thing clear. Any man who molests a woman in any way, shape, or form will be shipped instantly to Briarton. No questions, no hearings, no nothing. That's the way it is. Anything you don't understand? No, ma'am. Now's the time. All right, you may go. Good luck. Just a moment, Madsen. That's the way we have to do it. Sometimes the women start the fights, but... What can we do? I suppose it sounds like reverse discrimination, doesn't it? I'm surprised nobody's taken it to the Supreme Court. The fact is, Matson, this institution is on trial. The idea of men and women together in prison is revolutionary, but it's an experiment for a few places are willing to try. Here at Greenleaf in Massachusetts, at Framingham, a couple others, that's it. We take the success of Greenleaf very personally. Well, I, did, I didn't mean that... I'm sure you didn't. You see, we, uh, we have an odd mix here. But we don't get many like you. People with your education, your background, your opportunities. You're lucky to be here, Manson. I don't think you'd survive at Brighton.
Thank you. Can I get you a hair dryer, Mr. Madison? I think we should show Mr. Matson some respect, gentlemen. I mean, after all, he's a businessman, not a criminal. A businessman? How much do you get for being a businessman? One year, maybe two. Hell, I got a nickel. And all I did was knock over one little old bitty liquor store. Yeah, but you're a hardened criminal, boy. This here man hardly do nothing. Laid up a bunch of paper. Took some coins off a few guys. That's all. Well, if there was any justice, you wouldn't be here at all, would you? Look, I don't know what your beef is, you know, but I, I don't want any trouble, okay? Hey, look. Beef? Sunky ain't been here one day. He got it wrapped down already. Okay. What do you want? What you got? The sucker thinks he can buy his way out of this. Stupid. This is called negotiations. Now, how much you think it's worth for us to let you out of here? Yeah, make us an offer. I can get something, but I'm going to need some time. Time. And that's one thing we don't have a lot of. Let's get down. Wait a minute. Wait. I can get something. All I got to do is ask my wife. She can bring something in. Nope. The negotiation part's over. Now, this here is a welcoming part. Mr. Virgil here, he's already been welcome at Briarton. And we don't want you to feel left out. Oh, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like a real pro. Come on, let me get you out of here. Uh, Take it easy. Uh, uh, I knew you was coming in today. I saw your mug on, on the news. I says to my uh, Flanagan, I says, that Matt says, he's got a lot of class. Not like these punks around here. Uh, they with all the they show me. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jane, uh, give me your hand, will you? With the new fish, Matson. Bumped into a few of the boys. <clears throat> they took it easy on him. They had a little respect for him. Give me your arm. Oh. Uh -huh. Hey, Jamie, you know who you're helping? Roy Madsen. That insurance guy. Hey, what was it? $30 million? Woohoo! What a sting. What happened to him? Hey, he slipped in the shower, sir. We're taking him to the infirmary. There's nobody there. Uh. He must have slipped several times. I'll get you to a hospital if you feel you need it, but I think you're better off if you just let to go. What cottage are you assigned to? Three. Thank you, sir. So I've been doing a little figuring. Where I'm working on these work furloughs is this big condo. Very ritzy. A lot of bucks. I've been saving all of those furlough checks. All I need now is those talented fingers of yours. Hey, let me tell you, pal. She has got the most talented fingers in the business. I mean, she can open up anything. She is the best. Flanagan, the best. Don't get caught. Ask him. Hey, wait a minute. Why don't we include Matson in the job? Can we discuss this some other time, please? Guys like him don't crack safes. Yeah, but he's got class, and he's got all that juice on the top. I'm telling you, if my mob would have had a guy like him... No, you don't well, listen. We... If he had juice, he wouldn't be here. Oh. Oh. 
see you, Flanagan. Come on, I'm freezing. If you're watching Nightcap Theater being brought to you in part by Bill Tier Ford. Now, here's a word from our sponsor. We now return to Inmates, a love story. and I'll be able to wink at you. <laughs> yeah, I can never stop crying. Oh, put a piece of bread in your mouth. That'll help. Yeah? See Thanks. ya. What's your hurry? You're in my way. I've been here a week, right? I need somebody to turn me out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, kind of get me uh, acquainted. Why don't you just call a welcome wagon? Hey, Virgil. Cut out, Madison. Me and the little lady want to be alone. Yeah, well, I just thought I had to tell you the guards due back any minute. Catch you a little later, Mama. You're welcome. I could have handled him, and I can handle you. I'm sure you could. Look, am I in any mortal danger if I just say thank you very much for helping me out last week? I wasn't helping you. I was helping Flanagan. Oh. I didn't realize that. It was kind of hard to tell the difference. Oh. Uh, you through? Lady, what is your problem? Is it me specifically, or do you always have trouble making casual conversation? Look, Madsen, Flanagan may think you're the hottest thing since Al Capone. I think you're just another stone square. kids expecting me home for Christmas. Crown promised me a furlough. Only that screw Bennett put me on the sheet. Now Crown says I ain't ready. I can't go. What am I going to say to my kids? What'd you expect from Crown? I tell you, I'd rather be up at Barton. I'd rather be treated like a righteous killer than a mental defective. You hear that, Pepper? She's going to leave you for one of them big, bad, radical men in Briar. That's right, Gloria. 
Just stay ripped. Play with your shank. Show how tough you are. How you feeling, sugar? Oh, okay, except my back. Oh, that's natural. Honey, when I had my second... Give us a break, Agnes. All we ever hear about is you and those kids. Kids are the most important thing there is. You're just jealous because you ain't got any. Right. What's it feel like, Gracie? Well, it's too early to feel anything, really. But just thinking about it makes me feel good. I'd like to have a baby. I mean, there's a baby in there. All warm, helpless, and needing me. Oh, yeah, sure, Gracie got it all figured out. Baby be bouncing in his playpen, Johnny be sitting by the fire, and you be bringing him his pies and slippers. <laughs> yeah, sure, I can see that. Drop it, Marty. He kicked. Jane, you kicked. Too early. Oh, no, you did. Put your hand right here. Honey, Jane don't care nothing about no babies. Jane don't care nothing about nobody. Ain't that right, Jane? Hey, Jane. You ain't here for men. You ain't here for chicks. What is it with you? You too good for us? She's saving herself, like for that new fish, Matson. He blew ribbon enough for you? <laughs> not, not for Jay. She's looking for someone who sweat don't smell. You make me sick. Social secretary? Uh, she's my old lady. But we got an open marriage. You and her ought to get together sometime. Think about it.
easy, Liz. We're harmless. That's not funny, Roy. I hate this. Well, I'm not exactly crazy about it, either. I'm sorry. I just don't like hearing you refer to yourself as one of them. You come back to the cigarettes, huh? Yeah. They ran out of my Havana specials in the first canteen. I didn't seem real until right now. The trial, the waiting, the whole thing. Now you've been here in here two weeks. I still don't understand why. Leslie, if I hadn't doctored those books, somebody else would have. I had to do what I did, or everything I worked for would have gone right down the drain. So where's everything now? No, no, they understand. They're backing me. When my conviction's reversed on appeal, which is a month, six weeks at the most, I'll go right back to work. Everything will be exactly the same. But you've got to stand by me. I haven't been a very good visitor, have I? No, I bought you a present. They took it away from me. <laughs> I took one look at you. They figured you brought me a file. Figure. Are you kidding? What you got there is perfection. <laughs> Johnny. You meddling woman. Johnny, I want to talk to you. I told you, woman, I ain't interested in talking. Don't you get the message? The baby, Johnny. Who's my interest? Please. Please. Hey, you trying to get me busted? Well, shut up. <laughs> Read it, please. <laughs> Jane. Get out of here, Grace. Just get out. Hey, Johnny. Do you mind if I squeeze in? Hey, Marty, Marty I just want to get you for two. Don't hit me again! Don't hit me again! Jenny, what you trying to do? Give me a trouble! If I need your help, I will ask for it. This way, James. How are you getting along in the kitchen? It's warm. I'm gaining weight. Let's see, you've been here about a month now. Do you think you would be more comfortable in the accounting office? Yes, ma'am, I would. Good. You'll start there tomorrow. Go over our books and get yourself acquainted with them. That's all. Thank you. We like to put those with special abilities where they will do the most good. That's what Greenleaf's all about. 
Good luck. <laughs> I knew you had the juice. This is some job. Yeah? You got nice legs, honey. Maybe yeah, I can get you a job, too. Uh, they, uh, this ain't my style. I live by my wits. I'm an animal. You know? I'm gonna bust out of here in the middle of the night over the back wall. Then again, you're on work furlough three times a week. All you gotta do is step off the bus and disappear. One of my guys in my mob, he's up at Brighton. Willie Spencer. He's gonna bust out when I tell him to. Then when I get out, we're gonna meet on the outside. And then it's gonna be business as usual. What business is that? You know, I never asked you. What are you in here for? Bank job. Could have been one of the biggest scores ever. I had it planned down to a gnat's hair. My mob let me down. Your mob? My boys, Willie Spencer and the rest up at Biden. That's where Janie sent Big John. Boy, she really burned him, didn't she? Why do you think she did that? Well, who knows? She's crazy. She's a cat burglar, did you know that? They were a little weird, you know? They're not like the rest of the cons. Normal. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I got a split. My limo is waiting for me to take me on my work for a moment. Don't take any wooden nickels. Beep. Your old lady is getting out of Max tomorrow. Just thought you might want to know that. Thank you. I think you've overestimated our relationship. Sure we have. What she liked. What she did to John, that's just about the lowest thing you can do to anybody around here. Well, it's none of my business. She got hit. Hey, you tell her for us. She's lucky she got thrown in the hole. But she ain't finished paying yet. You tell her for us? Inmates, a love story, will return in a moment. good time. Make sure they all dance and take lots of pictures without the guards. Merry Christmas, Roy. New job all right? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Your accounting system is a little confusing. You figure it out.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You been thinking about our little talk? I find both of you very attractive women. Really. Don't get the wrong idea, Matson. Neither of us find you irresistible. Slow down. We don't want to scare him. It's sort of a favor. It's a straight business deal. We're getting our ticket soon, and we want to have a kid. You just provide the, uh, service. What you might call a freebie. I find that... It's very flattering. Oh, Matt, and I know you think we're a couple of freaks. But well, we've been together longer than most straight couples I know. Yeah, and we weren't even freaks until they went all progressive and brought the men in. We're gonna get out and we want to have a kid. That's all. And we'd be good mothers. I'm sure you would. And I don't think you're freaks. But I'm sorry, I can't. You must agree with you. You look nice. Thanks. Is this what you straight Johns call casual conversation? I thought I was a stone square. We must be making progress. Must be because it's Christmas. Must be. So what do you want, Matson? I need to talk to you. Okay, talk. Do you want to dance? Why don't you just tell me whatever it is you got on your mind? Okay, you two. Dance. Superintendent Crown wants everybody to have a good time. <laughs> what can we do? wanted to talk about. I received a message for you from uh, Virgil and Marty. Seems they're not too thrilled about what you did to Big John. What's that got to do with you? Well, it's funny you should ask about that, actually. They seem to be convinced we're some kind of an item for the Greenleaf yearbook. Listen, this is my beef. You stay out of it, you won't catch any of the flag. Okay? Loved holidays. She said that they they brought people together. You know that they were the one thing that everybody had in common. Is that what you have in common with us, Colin? Christmas. If you're asking me if I think I belong here, I don't. Plenty of people did worse in my own company, worse than I did. They're having. Christmas dinner at home right now, respected members of society. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you really have anything in common with uh, Marty or Virgil or even Flanagan? I'm a thief. I'm not a safe cracker or a cat burglar like crazy Flanagan says. I'm a thief. I'm no better than they are. No. You don't belong here. You don't. You're an outsider. You're like me. I don't know. Maybe that's why I find myself so. Wait a minute. Uh, just exactly what do you want from me, Hanson? Nothing. Nothing at all. I don't want anything from you. And you don't want anything from me. Do you have any idea how restful that is? Leave me alone, Hanson. Please, please, it's Christmas. I'm in prison. And all I want from you, I swear to you, all I want from you is a little warmth.
Marijuana. No, it isn't. Marijuana is illegal. Okay. What are you doing? Bucking for parole? Working on Sunday? Nope. This isn't work. You could have fooled me. Why aren't you in church, Matson? Listen to the chaplain tell us about how good we got it. That's what they like to see on your parole sheet. Oh, I forgot. You don't need parole. You're getting out on appeal, aren't you? What do you call this? Well, aren't you? I'll know in a week. Vinca. It's ground covering. That's um, for a carpus. That's azalea. These are tea roses. They're my favorite. Probably won't make it in here, though. Too delicate. I like flowers. They're quiet, and they don't disappoint you. Yeah, but don't they say even plants do better if the gardener talks nicely to them? You like getting your hands dirty? Sure. Some other time, Grace, okay? I gotta speak. Mama. Girl, when I think of the shame you brought on me already, and now look at you. Oh, Mom, I'm so glad you finally came. I knew you would. I've been busy a lot lately with Mr. Todd. Now, how am I gonna take care of that child, Grace? Mama, you got to. You just got to. If you don't, they're going to take him away from me. Screw says they'll adopt him out. I don't think I could stand that. Well, you are in this place, and you're no more than a child yourself. I swear, sometimes I think God is just punishing me. Oh, Mama, it's all right. It's going to be all right when I get out. Just the three of us. I just feel like I never did right by you. Oh, but Mama's gonna make it up to you, baby. I swear I will. I knew it. I just knew it.
You're not supposed to be in here, Matson. It's after hours. That's a violation. I'm going to have to put you on report. You work in the accounting office. What were you doing in the greenhouse? I like to work with the plants. What was Lieutenant Hodges doing there? He didn't tell me. I see. Do your own time, right? All right, I'll square things with Lieutenant Hodges. Have you figured out our accounting system yet? Do you want a straight or deferential? Just exactly what do you mean by that? I mean, ma'am, that you gotta be kidding. I rarely kid and never with inmates. What's the problem? Well, the books are a shambles. Whoever did them used at least three different accounting systems, and there's no way to tell what system was used where. There are no receipts, there's no supporting data, just totals. When books get this sloppy in the private sector, some poor turkey usually ends up in jail. Look. I inherited this mess when I took over here last August. I was hoping that if the books could pass muster with someone of your expertise, they might get by the state auditors. Only if they're deaf, dumb, and blind. Fiscal year ends in June. That's when we'll be audited. Do you think you could straighten things out by then? I won't be here. The decision on my appeal is due tomorrow. Let me put it this way. Can it be done? Whoever did it would have to have access to the files, mess all receipts, the payroll, uh, inmate trust accounts. He'd have everything he needed. He'd still have to understand exactly what you're asking him to do and be willing to do it. Well, I suppose I'd have to persuade him. Good luck with your appeal. What's that? A match. I'm going to pick it up on my work for a moment. Don't ask me. He said to pick you up some uh, tea roses. But I didn't see any roses. All I saw was thorns and a bush. Well, that's because uh, now is the time you plan it. Oh. So where is he? Uh, he's with his mouthpiece. They're talking about his appeal. He uh, figures he's going to be out of here by tomorrow. Oh. See you later. Well, I don't know how to make it any plainer to you, Roy. You know, we went for reversible error. The court said there wasn't any reversible error, so the petition was denied. Well, what about a new trial? Look, just take it easy. You've been here, what, seven, eight weeks? Seven weeks and four days, but who's counting? All right, all right. So you're eligible for parole in June. June is six months. Anyway, I don't want parole. Parole means you did it. I want it thrown out, reversed. At the very least, a new trial. A new trial is going to mean opening up the same old can of worms, and nobody wants that. I want that! Look, you're a team player. You're just paying your dues, and everybody appreciates it. Well, you tell the rest of the team that I appreciate their appreciation. Look at Roy. What? There's one more thing. We talked about selling the Mercedes. So? So, I hate to dump all this uh, on you at once, and... Believe me, I wouldn't say a word, except I'm under a lot of pressure from the senior partners. I don't need to tell you about accounts receivable, though. Use the municipals. Yeah, I thought of that, except Leslie said, well, she's sort of scared to part with them. Just sell the damn car. <laughs> Come on, Roy. Now, those bonds are her security. She doesn't know what's going to happen to you. Look at it from her side. Yeah, her side. Your side. We're inside. We call that a jive-ass shuck. Matson. I'm sorry. It's too bad that things worked out this way. But we found that hard work is the best antidote for depression. 
I'll expect you in the accounting office tomorrow morning. Mates, a love story. I can't. This isn't casual conversation or a little warmth or nice talk to the plants. I can't. Please. I can't. Please. Jane, what happened last night? Nothing. Grace said there was trouble. Was it Marty and Virgil? Nothing happened last night. Not with them, not with you. What did they do to you? Keep your hands off me. This isn't one of Elliot's touchy-feely sessions. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not Marty or Virgil. No, you're worse. You believe your own con. What con? What happened last night? That was no con. That was real. We're not the same as we were. You're just exactly the same. You're a thief. You were always a thief. Only now you admit it. People don't change. A thief is a thief. And a mark is a mark. And you use them, con them, and you steal from them. But you never let them get to you. Or you pay for it. You almost made me forget that last night. Why don't you go on back up to your accounting office and I'll stay down here with my garbage. Hey, big boy. Yeah, what's up? Come here, sit down. God, you're such a ding. <laughs> Haven't you snapped at what's been going on between you and me? Listen. Everybody's got a right to make a living. Everybody. Oh, I gotta 
a date for my parole hearing. Yeah, when? May 23rd. Hey, that's two months. We got a lot of time. You know what I'm gonna do for you when you leave this joint? What? I'm gonna set you up. No more tricking. Yeah, no more doing dope, no more boosting. Damn straight. <laughs> you know, I got a little money. I'm gonna buy you a little place. Can get you some new threads. Mm, help you start a new life. You believe me. You believe Flanagan. You're a stupid, crazy fool. Well, for some stupid reason, that girl out there thinks you're worth needing. I guess she doesn't understand that people don't change, huh? I'm not going. I'm not going. Stay tough, lady. Don't let anybody get to you. That's the only way to survive, right? Well, you're wrong. Tough is one step away from dead. Nobody gets to you when you're dead. Take a deep breath. Come on. Hold it, hold it. Easy. Easy. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right, honey. That's right. That's right. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Come on now. Deep breath. Hold it. Hold it. Ray, all right, Ray. Ray, it's all right. Come on now. Easy. It's gonna be all right. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Come on now. Easy. It's gonna be all right, honey. That's right. That's right. Shelby, get him out of here. Doctor on the books, four times a week from eight to five. He comes in twice a week and he leaves at three. You've got a budgeted full-time nurse who barely shows up half time. The state corrections manual mandates meat, one meal and four. 
We're lucky if we get substandard pork on alternate Tuesdays. Shall I go on? No. I don't need you to tell me what's been going on. What I need you to say is that everything has been fixed, has it? We're not talking about sloppy bookkeeping. Your liberal, humane, forward-looking facility is being drained. That will do, Matson. No, it won't. I'm not cooking your books for you. These people are my friends. I'm not fixing it so you can go on fleecing them. Stop that! Do you know what this prison runs on? I do now. Money. Only there's never enough. The guards want more, the maintenance staff wants more, the contract personnel. But the state won't send us any more because they don't give a damn about what we're accomplishing here. They don't want to hear about us. All they care about is a balanced budget. So I close my eyes to a few petty, insignificant irregularities, all in the interest of the greater good. It's funny, Miss Crown, but that sounds vaguely familiar to me. Something like what I heard myself say in court. I'd like to be reassigned to the kitchen, please. It's not that easy. You were in a woman's cottage last night. You're becoming a discipline problem. And discipline problems don't get parole. In fact, if they're bad enough, they get transferred to Briarton. You have three months. I started boosting when I was uh, 15. You know what I did with my first really big score? Send it home to my mother. <clears throat> I was doing all right as long as I was alone. But then I took big fall. First I got pregnant, and then I got married. Straight John, nice guy. Right out of Ladies Home Journal. Till he took off. Oh, I didn't mind. I just went back to the life. But... 25, seemed like I was all burned out. Anyway, <clears throat> I got busted again. When you know what, I'd let another John con me into thinking I needed him to pull a job off. Jerk is the piece. So, I'm doing a nickel to a dime. Well, I guess I just can't seem to get it through my head. I'm really better off alone. Not this time. my money and they tell me there wasn't any. Well, they're right, there isn't. Yeah, but I put everything in my account. Every time I go out on a work furlough, every dime. 1,266 bucks and 33 cents. Now I want it, I need it. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, Flanagan. When you went on work furlough, they took you off the state payroll for room and board. They've been charging you outside rates for every meal, every night in your cell. I know that, but where's my 1,200 bucks? Outside rates, Flanagan. I did the inmate trust accounts yesterday. We got 43 bucks left. 43 yeah, bucks? Yeah, wake up. They've been ripping you off. Who? What do you mean, they? The man, Crown, Hodges, the whole Crown? Suit. Yeah, she sits by while the rest of them pocket the money. She keeps everybody happy, and she, she looks good for the governor. Hey. Wait a minute. It's not them, it's you. Me? Yeah, you. You're the high-class guy with the juice at the top. I didn't do this. I well, didn't do any of Well, then how come you got this cushy job? Huh? Cooking them books? You're worse than they are. You pretended to be with us. You made us believe in that scam, didn't you? You could have told us. I just did. 
got some money on the outside. I can have my wife bring it. How much do you want? I don't want nothing from you. You're a fake, Matson. You could take that money and stuff it. Inmates, a love Dad. to call me by mistake. I can get Grace for you. Uh, no, I asked to see you. I just couldn't talk to Grace. You know how emotional she gets. What's the matter? Something wrong with the baby? Well, he's fine. I'm sure he's just fine. But Grace is still such a child herself. And I was thinking that the baby would be better off in a home where they take good care of him. No, you can't. I already did. I tried, I really tried. But Mr. Todd, that's my boyfriend. He wants to take me to California with him. Yeah, you want me to tell Grace? I've seen how she looks up to you. No. I'm gonna get Grace for you. Oh, look, I won't be here. I can't. Okay, you go on and get out then. Don't take that tone with me. What do you want, a medal? Listen, you little prison bitch. You never gave up no kind of life like I did for Grace. I was young and good looking, and I all but forgot what a man was like when I was raising that girl. You ain't never been no mother to nobody like that, so don't you start telling me what I gotta do. Just tell her she's lucky I'm not keeping the baby for her. Damn lucky. Hey, Flanagan! Hey, Sonny, I gotta talk you to you. Later, Big it's Lowy. only gonna I'm busy take a minute. Now. Only a no. minute. Hey, I want you to stay away from her. You stay out of my way, little man. She don't belong to you. Yeah, who says you? You know, you walk around here spouting a lot of garbage about your big time scores and your boys up in Briarton. Well, you're nothing but a lousy, creeping little lion punk. You're nuts. Because I've been to Brighton, boy, and I know all about your big-time scores. Bank job? You knocked off a lousy little pizza parlor. And your boys did a hard time, because you rolled over for the man you freaked. leave him alone, boy. Go ahead, finish with him yet. Now, you ever do get together with your boys again, but they're going to tear you apart piece by piece. Big time gangster. Nothing but a lousy little punk. <laughs> Come on. Come on, there's people waiting. There's only one phone in the building. Take all the night. Yeah, I want to call my lady. We got to get back to the cottage pretty soon. Something's funny. Mama and Richie were supposed to come by today, only they didn't. Another telling me that the phone was here. Your mother was here. I saw her. What are you talking about? They didn't tell me. I tell you, why don't we go back to the cottage? Something's wrong. 
Is it Richie? No, no, Richie's okay. Grace, she's not gonna keep them. What are you talking about? They, they was just here Richie's last week. Richie's in a foster home. Your mother's going to California with some guy. She asked me to tell you. I don't you. believe you. Grace, it'll be all right. It will. You're young. You'll be out of here soon. You'll meet a good no, man. No, Grace, please don't. Grace, Grace, please, please. I'll be your friend. I'll take care of you. Be all right. Now you feel good. You feel nothing. I guess that's good. wasn't tough. So why is she dead? All inmates report to your cottages. All inmates report to your cottages. I don't understand. It's important. There's some ugly things going on in here. That's going to help me prove it. Just see this. Daniels gets that right away. Why are you doing this? I don't care what's going on in this place. These people have got nothing to do with you. Or with us. Roy, your hearing is tomorrow. And this is going to be nothing but a bad dream. You're going to be home, you're going to have your old job back, and everything's going to be just the way it was when you left. I'm not coming home, Leslie. I'm not coming back to everything the way it was. Me. What about you, Les? There's not going to be much money. No shopping sprees, no tennis clubs, no maids. I'm not going to be able to support that kind of lifestyle. Could you tell us, Mr. Madsen, what you feel you've learned since you came here to Greenleaf? Yes, sir. 
I believe I've come to understand the nature of my crime. When I perpetrated a fraud with my company's earning reports, I thought I was merely committing a small indiscretion to help a good and valuable company over some rough spots. Nobody would be hurt. I realize now there is no such thing as a small indiscretion. A price is always paid in human terms sometimes as much by the perpetrator as by the victim. Do you feel the institution has been instrumental in your rehabilitation? Definitely. It's remarkable how much life in this prison has come to resemble what I remember from the outside. Congratulations. That was one of the most efficient snow jobs I've ever seen. Thank you for your recommendation. Here. They're flawless. And if anything should turn out to be wrong, you can always say you let a convicted felon work on them. I got my parole. Congratulations. I'll be leaving tomorrow. Fun voyage, Madison. You made the days fly. Cut it out, Jean. You still don't understand, do you? You waltzed in here. You had a couple of shocks to your nervous system. You decided that you and me were going to save each other. And now you're going to waltz out. So what? Nobody, nothing makes any difference. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're different. I'm different. And even this place is going to be different. Yeah, well, why don't you tell that to Flanagan if he's still alive? Listen to me. I cooked the prison books. They're draining this place dry, food, medical care, the inmate trust accounts, everything. Only I copied all the evidence and I got it out in a letter to Stuart Daniels, my attorney. The fur's going to fly. I got it out through my wife. When I told her I wasn't coming home to live with her. Nobody gives a damn, Matson. Doesn't matter if your attorney reads the letter or the governor or the president. Nobody cares. Not even you. Once you get just one little whiff of the street. I love you. You got two choices. You can start screaming and get me busted to Brighton, or you can listen. You got everything backwards. You think the only way to beat this place, to stay human in here, is to try to feel nothing. Flanagan gets dragged off, nothing. Grace dies, you shut it off, nothing. I say I love you, nothing. You're an expert at nothing. But that's what they want. That's what they think we are, nothing, ciphers, zeros. And if you keep this up, it'll turn out to be true. You'll be nothing. And they'll win. Give me a sign, Jane, please. Show me that there's still something human in there. Or maybe it's too late. Now return to, we now return to Inmates, a love story.
you get this? From Matson's wife yesterday. He tried to smuggle it out. Why didn't you let me know immediately? You didn't want to be involved. She tried to call a couple of times, but I didn't let anything through. I just gave him his walking papers on my recommendation. We can't let him walk out of here. Out of my hands. I can't reverse the board's decision without a reason. What do you want me to do? I don't care. Just do it. Yes, ma'am. All you got to do is make it look like he's messing with you, and then you put it to him. I want to do it to Jane. This is better. This is a romance. I don't like Max, Marty. I couldn't take Max. You're not going to get Max. You're not going to get anything, except maybe a pat in the back. This thing's wired, babe, all the way to the top. I don't know. Some of us starting to think you're chicken. All talk and no action. Your parole's been canceled. Get back to your cottage. Didn't you hear me? Not a chance, lady. Whatever you're planning to do to me, you better do it right now, right here. Hodges, somebody! My attorney's here to pick me up. He's very well connected at the state capitol. Now, you can cancel my parole, and I'll tell him exactly why, including the fact that you tried to kill me. Or you can let me go, on the chance that a thief on parole would rather keep his mouth shut. Call security. This man's going back inside. I said to call security. I heard what you said, and I saw the books, both sets. I made a mistake, Roy, about you and about her. She's a rotten apple. We get him here like any place else. I'm still in charge here. Not for long, I think. You can't shut us both up. This place is a good idea. And some of us still want to make it work. Good luck. Thank you. Matson! 
Goodbye, Miss Crown. It's been a rehabilitating experience. Today, August 29th. How time flies, huh? what you call doing real hard time. Visiting hours are over. All inmates report to your cottages. Jane? 